Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, today's uh, Light Bytes episode. Um, and today we're going to be looking at how you can combine architectural and decorative um, lighting elements within a project. Um, my name is Luke Thomas. I'm the design director at John Cullen, and I'm joined by uh, Rebecca Crawford, our design director in the Middle East. So welcome, Bex. Thanks for hello, again. hello. <laughs> so I shouldn't have said good morning, actually, should I? Afternoon. Uh, good afternoon and good evening, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've got a sort of a mixture of people always joining mm -hmm. in from all around the world. Uh, so yes, it's all sorts of different time zones as usual. <laughs> We've got uh, quite a lot to cover today. Um, it's an interesting topic that um, Rebecca really wanted to cover because it's created a lot of frustration on projects in the past and <laughs> there's a lot we can do actually to to resolve some of those issues and to, to create better um, projects. Um, we're going to be going as quickly as we can through the presentation. Um, it should last about 25-30 minutes. Decorative versus architectural, what is the difference between these two? What do we actually mean uh, with this terminology. So decorative lighting um, tends to be your pendants, uh, table lamps, uh, chandeliers, wall lights, that sort of thing. So they're usually sculptural um, pieces. They're, they're there to make an impact and a statement. Um, they're probably the, one of the first things you're going to notice when you, when you enter a space. And they should really be um, in keeping with the interior styling uh, of the property. <clears throat> So it tends to be that these are quite um, heavily uh, influenced by uh, the interior designer or even the client on a project as well, because they can have a real personal meaning um, to the project. And it tends to be in terms of the light effect that you're getting from these, um, it's usually an ambient lighting effect. So you're getting a, a, a general glow of light, which fills the space with lighting. Um, so in contrast, the architectural lighting, <clears throat> usually this should be um, discrete and low glare and should disappear from view. You shouldn't really notice the architectural lighting. What it should do is enhance the interiors and the architecture um, of, of the space. So you're picking out different features within it. Um, you can have functional architectural lighting um, and also accent lighting as well. So it could be up lights or step lights. Uh, it could be a, a discrete um, ceiling recessed down lighter to spotlight onto a piece of artwork so it really pops off the wall. Mm -hmm. So it, it shouldn't really be seen. And that's usually integrated into the architecture of the building. So that's what we mean between the two different types um, of lighting that we're going to be looking at today. So just to put um, some context mm -hmm. uh, into it. And here you can see the different elements um, in play. So over the flowers uh, on these uh, coffee tables, uh, we have a uh, ceiling recessed spotlight, very low glare, that's going to give you that accent light down onto the flowers, pick it out as a feature. And then behind the staircase, you've got um, a linear LED strip, uh, which is providing you with a backlighting effect. And that is then complemented by these wall lights here, which will give you that soft ambient lighting effect um, that, that fills the gap between the accent lighting. Feel free to jump in at any point, Bex. <laughs> yeah, so I was going to say with the uh, the decorative lighting there, it's quite a quite a nice standard um, approach with it. With this quite a classic look of having a wall light with the with the linen as as well on the shade. I think what is important to note with something like uh, a shaded wall light, and it, we'll, we'll especially look into it in more detail mm -hmm. with with table lamps, is the type of fabric that you end up putting on these uh, fixtures, because depending on the layers of fabric that are, that are used is going to determine the amount of light that can actually come out from the light and how it controls the light. So here you can see it's almost sort of lighting up and down because it's quite a, a solid fabric that's used with, with probably a backing card as well. So it's able to really sort of channel where the light is going. Um, so it's very, very important that even though you consider a wall light with a shade, you really sort of get to know what kind of shade you're going to be putting in because that will overly um, affect the, the light output in that room. Mm. I mean, you've always got to consider the two elements as one, the architectural and the decorative lighting together. You can see in this kitchen space here over the island, we have these three hanging pendants. Now it tends to be with uh, a decorative light source like this, um, it's there to create a statement. It's an eye-catching feature. 
Um, and you notice it within a space. Bex mentioned earlier that this almost looks like a hanging jewel uh, within the yeah. space. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when we go into you, the, yeah, into the next one. <laughs> yeah. What it doesn't give you is the, a task light down onto the work surface. Um, it gives you just a soft ambient lighting effect. So what we tend to do is combine these decorative lights with um, a ceiling recessed light that will give you a punch down onto the work surface. So you can see there a much higher level of illumination once we've turned on that ceiling recess spotlight. And then when we go to the next slide here, we can actually turn off those hanging lights and you can see that the island is still lit. So you've got functional task light coming from the down lights and then you've got the decorative element which is there as, as a visual feature within the space. One of your projects next, Bex, from Dubai. Uh, yes, yes. This is a, a crystal chandelier. Yes, it's a, this is a beautiful installation from um, Serap <clears throat> that we did um, to fit the scale of the property because <clears throat> it was such a, a large uh, scale project with ceilings of over four meters. So we needed something in the space because the interiors were very simplistic, uh, yet very bold in their in their design. So. We needed something that would juxtapose, I suppose, yeah, it, it would work in, in correlation with it, but it needs to still stand out as a sculptural piece. Um, kind of typical chandelier that you get with your crystals because it wouldn't have fitted the scheme. But we wanted to work with glass because during the day, once these shears are open, this is entirely glass all around. So having a solid material would have blocked off too much view uh, from the inside to the out. So this, this needed to appear translucent during the day and then at night really, really come to life. So by choosing this um, beautiful, as you said, almost ice-like uh, glass, it, with the lighting all integrated within it, it was able to create this incredible statement without being something that just didn't work in the space. So it was a really, really, bold approach um, and it was exciting to kind of see something that, that, that really did juxtapose with everything else in, in, in the room. Is that multiple um, light sources within the, the chandelier which create the, the sparkle effect as well as yes. the, the mottled glass as well? Yeah and we did have what you're not able to see in this one we did have lights integrated into the ceiling as well that were able to light down onto the table because although you can't necessarily see it in these images once the table is completely covered um, you still need to be able to see what is on your on your work surface so with those additional lights you're able to get a very narrow beam of light that was able to really pinch through the design of the chandelier and still get enough light down onto the table below to create that difference um, with the layers of light which was quite tricky <laughs> so that you don't get too much shadow um, but it worked which was great and here's really the contrast between the, the the decorative wall lights and then the the travertine stone uh vex which is uh yeah it's not something that's happened by accident it's a design element uh, yes of, exactly uh, it was it was we wouldn't have been able to use something that was obviously a shaded style classic wall light here. It mm. needed to be something that was more contemporary with a little piece of sort of artwork integrated with it. So it, it did become the artwork in the space. Um, and by having the indirect light source as well, you are able to really pick up the details on the stonework at night, which is obviously this, this because of the natural elements that were all around you really wanted to get those imperfections from the stone that came through and by keeping everything else very clean and simple the decorative lighting really stands out here but not take center stage against the stone because the, i mean ultimately the the architectural details that we're looking at here are what were center stage in the whole project um, and it just it created a little bit more of that mid-level light that you need because it's mm. such a big project during the day you have those fresh elements of daylight coming through and it was very very clear but then at night you, you needed that that warmth because it is such a vast size or scale that you you needed to create that comfort that you get from from a home it ties in quite well with the next point really is that you also want to be able to dim these lights as well don't you so it's always yeah. important to check these things <clears throat> um the the decorative suppliers design some incredible um 
features, uh, chandeliers, pendants, wall lights, they don't always consider the actual light source which is being used. And we're going to give you some tips on uh, what you should look out for uh, a little bit later in the presentation. But there's some really key things which are critical to making sure that you can tie it in with the architectural lighting. Uh, 